everybody, my name is Tanya and today we're going to talk about 2017 reading goals. So I've just filmed a bit of a wrap up about how I did in 2016 with my reading goals, so that should have gone up before this one. Um, had some wins and some not so successful uh, goals in that year, so that's kind of flowing through to this year to rectify that. So I've got a few things to talk about here, it's mainly along the same lines, um, but with an added little thing at the end which I can't really talk about yet. Uh, and let's just get into it. So first, again, for the staple, for my Goodreads goal this year, I'm going to continue to set it at 80 books. It's what I've set for the last few years. I've comfortably surpassed that every time, but I don't want it to be a uh, challenging goal. It's just a goal to have it, to get the way that it lays out, and, you know, to, to say that I've completed it is nice. As I said before, my backup kind of what I'd like to reach in the year is quite often 100, so, you know, I guess I'll be shooting for that slightly, but if I don't reach that, it's fine. I'm more than happy with 80 books. My second staple will continue to be my Agatha Christie project. I am still going on this one. I still have a couple of years to go. I did do the calculation recently and I forget whether it's two or three years um, that I will be still doing this. Probably three, two full years and a partial year maybe. I have to look at that again. Um, but in either case, I will be reading 12 more Agatha Christie's next year. Um, and I'm going to this time very much hope to get through uh, one each month instead of five in December. Uh, because, you know, that's much nicer on everybody and, you know, my enjoyment and my retention and, you know, just life. Um, so I'm hoping this year I can find a better balance when I start studying again and at least still manage to read my Agatha Christie each month, um, among other things we shall see. But in either case, by the end of 2017, I will have read another 12 Agatha Christie books. My next goal is making some progress on another project or list. This time it's the 1001 books you must read before you die list. As I've mentioned previously, I'd hoped to get to 300 books from the list by the end of 2016, which didn't happen. I ended the year on 284 books read from the list, which I'm very happy with. Um, but I will again tentatively put my goal for 2017 as reaching 300 books from the list. So that means I'll have to read 16 books during 2017 to reach that point, which is fairly achievable. Uh, again, as with last year, if this doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's kind of a nice milestone that I've been aiming for, but there's been plenty of other things going on in my life that uh, mean I haven't quite got to that point. So this is a loose goal, but I would like to get to the 300 books read from the thousand list this year if possible. But my other challenges, my other goals have to take priority over this one. There is some overlap, which is convenient, but that's what I'd like to achieve for the 1001 books list this year. Next comes one with a bit more of a deadline, and that's the 30 books you should read before age 30. So this is a list from Flavorwire, which I've done a video about before, which I'll link down below. It's a list of 30 books that they think you should read before age 30, which I've chosen as the list that I will try and do before age 30. I am 29 at the end of January this year, which means I've only got a little over a year until I turn 30, so I have to read the remaining books from this list in that time. And I didn't read any in 2016, so I now have seven books that I have to finish in 2017, so this is happening. The first one is The Iliad by Homer. I have to read The Iliad and The Odyssey uh, for this list. I've previously read The Odyssey but not The Iliad. I think I'd like to go back and reread The Odyssey with this one in tandem since, you know, The Iliad comes first but I started with the second. I do own the audio versions narrated by Dan Stevens of the two of these. I did read The Odyssey instead. Um, but I'm wondering maybe I might uh, listen to them this time instead and see how that goes. The next one I have to complete is The Complete Stories of Planet Eric Connor, which I have been very much looking forward to. And I know Erica has been cheering every time I mention it, and I still haven't got around to it. I did start it once. It's actually sitting right over here, so it's, you know, nice and conveniently placed. I need to start uh, nice and early. I think if I space that out throughout the year, um, it's not going to be uh, very hard. It's not going to be very hard anyway, but it's quite a chunky book. So if I start in January and read, you know, some every month and have a glorious year of Planet O'Connor, I think that sounds like a very nice plan. So I better get that off the shelf uh, and pick out something to read today, perhaps. The next one I have to read will be a quick one, thankfully, and that is Much Do About Nothing by William Shakespeare. So teeny tiny play. I've quite enjoyed uh, doing the dual reading, but also listening to a performance of the, uh, the play for reading Shakespeare lately. I found that the audio versions that are kind of dramatised with, um, you know, a full cast uh, is really good for getting, I guess, the emotion into the words and, like, greater meaning from their performance, I guess, because these are made to be seen and, and to see performed instead of reading them, um, just reading Shakespeare, um, well, you know, 
nice in itself, um, it, reading it alongside that performance um, adds an extra element to it. So I think I will try and get a hold of the book and an audio version of that one so I can listen to that. The next book from the list I have to read is Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zara Neale Hurston, which is something that I've heard only fantastic things about and I've meant to get to for a very long time. So I'm very pleased that I will finally get to that because of this. And that happens to be a book on the thousand books you must read before you die list. So bonus. The next book is also on the thousand list and that is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. Again, I've heard fantastic things about this. I've really enjoyed what I've read by Kurt Vonnegut in the past. I have had advice to go with the physical format of this one instead of the audiobook, so I have to get a hold of the physical copy to read this uh, instead of going the audio route, and I'm very much looking forward to reading this one as well. And just looking, the remaining two books are also from the Thousand List, so uh, if I actually manage to get to all this, and I will, um, that's an easy four books from the Thousand List uh, checked off, so I like this crossover, it's uh, very handy. The next one however is a chunker and quite intimidating and that is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. This is something that again I've looked forward to getting to but with some trepidation. It's a monster, it's got a lot of footnotes and things. Again I think um, going the physical route instead of the audio route is the best for this because you kind of missed out on the footnotes and that experience which I've heard is quite essential. Uh, so I'll be picking this up in physical form at some point during the year. Again, I probably should start sooner rather than later and maybe get it out of the way before I start my first semester of study. That might be a plan. We'll see how I go with that. And the last book I've got to complete that 30 before 30 list is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, which is something that I started over a year ago as a buddy read. I think I got 100 pages in and then I kind of petered out. Again, I've heard fantastic things about this. I just wasn't clicking with it at the time. So I'm hoping revisiting it at a different stage, I'll have a completely different experience with it. I wasn't disliking it, I just hadn't been drawn in yet, which was a bit of a shame. So again, I've just heard fantastic things. I think it's going to be a very important work and I'm hoping that I will get to that one soon in the year too. If I can manage to knock a lot of these off in the early part of 2017, so I don't have a scramble at the end, that would probably be very beneficial. <laughs> so we will see. And then I have one last goal for 2017, which I'm not actually going to talk about here. It's a new secret project. It has to do with another list, so I'll give you that hint. I will be hopefully filming that video today too, talking about that list uh, and a project that I'm hoping to do or hoping to start in 2017. It's something that will last a number of years, I'd say, but something I'd like to launch in 2017. So watch out for that video soon. So that sums up what I hope to achieve in 2017. Again, some of these are not too strict. If I don't get to them, it doesn't really matter. But I really would like to complete the 34 day list. So that is my, you know, firm challenge for this year. And of course, I want to make my progress in Agatha Christie. So uh, around that, whatever happens, happens. Let me know in the comments if you're reading from any of these lists or doing any similar projects. Or let me know what some of your goals for 2017 are. So as always, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.